So I am Laura Hand. I'm a licensed clinical social worker with Ozarks Healthcare, Behavior Healthcare. Um, I work in the crisis office and I am also an individual therapist. Um, today's presentation is going to be on crisis de-escalation and this will work, you know, in adult settings or in children's settings. Um, we're just kind of meeting the person where they're at. So some concepts to remember. Trying to reason with an angry person isn't possible. The first and only objective in de-escalation is to reduce the level of agitation so that discussion becomes possible. De-escalation techniques are inherently abnormal. They go against our natural fight or flight instincts. To be effective, we should remember to remain calm and centered, be professionally detached. Since these skills are not natural, they do require practice to become useful. So some things that help us with um, de-escalation is knowing where people are coming from. So um, people feel loss of power. Um, sometimes it's maintained self-esteem, um, fear, failure of fear, seeking attention, displaying anger, psychological, physiological causes. Signs of agitation, raised voices, rapid speech, high-pitched voice, fidgeting, shaking, bald fists, um, erratic movements, wild gestures, pacing, aggressive postures. Nonverbal techniques, we like to look at the four C's. Um, control your breathing, control your voice, volume, and tone, control your body language, and control your vocabulary. Remember, calm is just as contagious as fear or panic. Nonverbal techniques, appear calm and self-assured. Select an appropriate location, maintain limited eye contact, maintain a neutral facial expression, maintain an alert posture, keep your hands to yourself, speak soothingly, and position yourself for safety. Positioning yourself for safety, we always like to try to be at eye level with a person that um, is having the problem with escalation. Stay at the same height, angle yourself for 45 degrees, keep exit clear, always face the person. Verbal techniques, um, disregard content, focus on calming. They're, you know, kind of chewing you out and using some bad words and everything else. We don't have to focus on those bad words. We just focus on trying to keep them calm and to calm them to our level. Use soft, slow, and low tones of voice. Do not interrupt them. Do not get defensive. Um, respond selectively. Be honest. Empathize with feelings, not behaviors. Let them know, hey, it's okay. You know, I'm sorry that you're feeling that way today, but, you know, I'm here to help you. So you tell me what you need to. Let's get it out. Do not empathize emotionally. Do not attempt to argue or persuade. You know, you're probably thinking, can these tips help me? Whether you work in education, healthcare, human services, business, or any field, you might deal with angry, hostile, or non-compliant behavior every day. Your responses to defensive behavior is often the key to avoiding a physical confrontation with someone who has lost control of their behaviors. You know, the top 10 CPI crisis prevention intervention, de-escalation tips can help you to respond to difficult behavior in the safest, most effective way possible. So the, the top 10, number one, stop talking. Um, if we were supposed to talk more than we listen, we would have two tongues in one ear. Mark Twain quote. Um, prepare yourself to listen, relax, and focus on the speaker. Put the speaker at ease. Help the speaker to feel free to speak. Remove distractions. Focus on what's being said. Empathize. Try to understand the other person's point of view. Be patient. A pause, even a long pause, doesn't necessarily mean it's time for you to talk. It doesn't mean the speaker's finished. Avoid personal prejudice. Try to be impartial. Listen to the tone. Volume and tone both add to what someone is saying. Listen for ideas, not just words. You need to get the whole picture, not just isolated bits and pieces. Wait and watch for nonverbal communication. Um, gestures, facial expressions, and eye movements can all be important. Simple listening test. Listen, nod, don't interrupt. Let them vent. Let them be heard. Responsive listening skills. Responsively listen with the intent of understanding instead of replying. That's a lot of things that we have problems with is we're listening to respond not to be listening. So that's some of the things that we need to look at and be observant of. Um, 
obtaining information, identify the problems, resolving conflicts, improve the accuracy of communication, solve problems, motivate the speaker. Be empathetic, not judgmental. When someone says or does something you perceive as weird or irrational, try not to judge or discount their feelings. Um, whether or not you think that these feelings are justified, they are real to the other person. Pay attention to them. Keep in mind that whatever the person is going through, it may be the most important thing in their life at that moment. Tip two is respect personal space. If possible, stand 1.5 to 3 feet with an open stance for a person who's escalating. You know, sometimes personal space is different for people, so 1.5 to 3 feet might not be your personal space. You might like one foot, but some people don't like you to be that close to them, and it, it's, it feels like they're being attacked. So we need to make sure and monitor that. It can decrease a person's anxiety. If you must enter someone's personal space to provide care, explain your actions so the person feels less confused and frightened. Avoid overreacting, remain calm, rational, and professional. While you can't control the person's behaviors, how you respond to their behaviors will have a direct effect on whether the situation escalates or diffuses. Positive thoughts for yourself is, I can handle this and I know what to do. will help you maintain your own rationality and calm the person down. If you maintain calm, they will maintain calm. At this stage, escalation or de-escalation could depend on your reaction. And we don't want to look at overreaction, like whenever someone tells you something that's a fear from their life, you don't want to overreact and go, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened to you. We want to go, you know, I'm really sorry to hear that. Can you tell me more about what that looks like? Focus on feelings. Facts are important, but how someone's feeling, that, that's really important. It's the heart that matters. So yet some people have trouble identifying how to feel about what happens to them. Watch and listen carefully for the person's real message. Try saying something like, that must be crazy. Supportive words like these will let people know that you understand what's happening and you might get a positive response. You know, it might not be like that. It might be like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm sorry that you felt that way in that moment. How can I help you with that? What can we do? Ignore challenging questions. Answer challenging questions often results in a power struggle. So you're going to get someone who escalates and they're going to be challenging you with, they shouldn't have said that to me that way. How can you make them stop? Then we don't need to escalate and go, well, I'll make Bob stop by doing this. We need to just go, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but how do you think that Bob could have not been so aggressive towards you? What would have made you more comfortable? Ignore the challenge, but not the person. Bring their focus back to how you can work together to solve the problem. Set limits. If a person's behavior is aggressive, defensive, or disruptive, give them clear, simple, and enforced limits. Offer concise and respected choices and consequences. A person who upset may not be able to focus on everything you say. Be clear, speak simply, and offer the positive choice first. We want to limit choices, you know, maybe two choices, especially when we're dealing with children. We don't want to give them too many choices that makes them feel further overwhelmed or increase their anxiety or aggression. Choose wisely what you insist upon. It's important to be thoughtful in deciding which rules are negotiable and which are not. For example, if a person doesn't want to shower in the morning, you can allow them to choose the time of day that they feel best for them. If you can offer a person options and flexibility, you may be able to avoid unnecessary conflict allow silence for reflection. We have all at one time or another had an experience with awkward silence. While it may seem counterproductive to let moments of silence occur, sometimes it's the best choice. It can give a person a chance to reflect on what happened and how he or she needs to proceed. Silence can be a really powerful tool of communication. Allow time for decision. When a person's upset, they may not be able to think clearly. Their decision process might be on your timeline. It's on their timeline and we have to allow that to happen. A person's stress level increases when they feel rushed. Ending de-escalation. When the person has calmed down, you can then begin to address their individual situation in the same patient and professional manner that you have already displayed. So a lot of things can contribute to an escalated person. We always want to remember that the escalated person is up here and we want to maintain down here. And to get them to come to us, we don't go to them. We have them come to us. So we have to use our words, our communication skills, and our body language to be able to get to that point and to understand where they're at in that situation.